Hello everyone, I hope the camera is straight, but today I wanted to film a full face of like everything new that I've gotten recently because I've gotten a lot of new stuff and I don't want to do like dedicated review videos to each product, but I still wanted to show you guys them. So I'm just going to be talking to you guys, it's going to be a get ready with me. I will be showing you guys two of the new Pat McGrath items, I have the highlight and the new quad. Also, you can't see it from here, but my door back there is open so you might hear a little bit more sound because I got a kitty and her litter box is through that door so I have to keep it open but let's just get into it so I don't make this video a thousand years long but I don't have any I mean I have a ton of new stuff I would say but I am going to be using some older products as well I'm just probably going to title it like full face of new or makeup because I want to talk to you guys about the new stuff but I will be using some of my old favorites and just kind of showing you my current base product routine. So I'm going to start with the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I don't go in with like a full amount of sunscreen with this because I use it more as a primer. But I have been enjoying this. It found it's like more of a silicone texture, like it would almost be a matte finish. And it's not glowy at all, but I don't find it mattifies my skin. So I have been liking it. I also don't have a mirror out, so that would be good to get. But yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend this as like a sunscreen because I don't I don't know if I'd like it on its own and I don't like the scent of it on its own. But as like a primer, it's fine. It isn't something that I find is a necessary primer for my collection because it doesn't super mattify me, but I like it because most sunscreens add a ton of glow. I added like uh, three-fourths or half the amount of sunscreen that you should have which is fine when I'm just sitting inside but I will sometimes even do this on top of my sunscreen I don't really know most days though I have been using it as my only sunscreen I'll just do like two or three finger worth of it because most sunscreens make me super glowy and a lot of my foundations are on the glowier side and it is so hot out that it's just so many glowy products with cream cheek products as well that I just need not so much glow. So I find that the sunscreen isn't super mattifying. Like it's definitely soft to the touch, but I wouldn't say it's a mattifying sunscreen. It's just more of like a satin. I don't know. It kind of just sinks into the skin. In my project pan, I do have this Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Primer. So I have been just going in with this, even though... I've been trying not to be too glowy. I've just been going in with a little bit of this just on like the high points of my face just because I'm trying to use this one up. I haven't been able to use it up completely. That's what the primer combo looks like. This is a nice primer, but it's so expensive. I think it's like a thinner version of the Glowless, but it does have like shimmers in it, which I don't like because I noticed that when I'm done with my whole makeup routine, I can see little shimmers, which it's fine, it's not like a glitter, but it's not, it's not like a skincare glow. It's definitely like more of a shimmery glow, so I don't love this. This little tiny bottle is like 25 bucks. Okay, and then next, I'm going in with obviously the Fenty Beauty eShops. I don't think I've touched another foundation. Well, that's a lie. I have used another foundation only because I put it in my shop, my stash, but this foundation is so good. And recently I've been using it with my fingers, which I don't love because I have to go wash my hands after. But the finish that this gives is so good. I have the shade two and I just smear this around and the final product is beautiful. Like the texture on my skin, amazing. It blends out easily. I will just like tap it in after and it's, it's so good. This is my number one foundation and I would a thousand percent repurchase it because it isn't super glowy. I mean, it adds a little bit of hydration. I also didn't apply it too much, but it's also not super mattifying. It's not as finicky as like the Kosas wet, um, not the wet lip oil, the Kosas face oil, tinted face oil, I think it's called. So I really, really like it. Okay, I just put a camera, or not a camera, I put a mirror right under the camera so I can actually see, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit more on this cheek and then I really didn't put any on my forehead but it's not like a ton of coverage for some people say that it is more coverage than they like which I mean compared to like a glossier type of coverage it I mean it has coverage but I don't think it's too much or anything like that you can really sheer it out 
I have a pimple right here that I did not notice, but we're gonna ignore that. <laughs> but I just kind of tap over it afterwards and I just do a nice thin layer and then anything that I still need covered, I'll just go in with concealer and call it a day. So yeah, I usually go in with a little bit more coverage, but I think for today, it'll be fine with some concealer on top. So I'm gonna go wash my hands or just like rinse them off because it has foundation all over them and then i will be right back okay so that is the foundation i have a little bit of breakouts i have not been taking care of my skin i've honestly just been using moisturizer and not like any treatment products so i need to get back on my skincare game but now i'm going to go in with the dior skin what am i saying dior forever skin correct concealer in the shade is zero n i don't love this for my under eyes because i find it creases a lot but for my face it has some good coverage so it looks like i'm applying a lot but i wiped off the brush i'm just going on a little bit on my cheeks um i'll put this here next to the pimple not on it for cross contamination and i'll blend it on top and then a little bit on my nose since it gets pretty red i am just going in with my fenty beauty foundation brush but yeah anyways back to what i said at the beginning i got a cat um she's not out right now she's been under my bed and not like hiding like she just naps on the edge and she's still getting adjusted so like she'll walk around a lot and if you go up to her sometimes she'll like back away from you but then like the moment you pick her up she'll cuddle you so she's just she's a really friendly cat she's just still getting used to the environment she's seven months old so not a kitten but still not fully grown um not named yet i have two names as of right now that i'm going in between i literally just got her yesterday so I'm really indecisive and I'm trying to think of a name. Right now I'm, I'm in between the name Maisie and Olive. I don't know what to pick. My family likes Maisie and my fa and my friends all like like Pepper, which I wanted to go with at first, but I, I just don't like the p, p like the Pepper. I don't know, I'm weird. I like the soft like Maisie, Olive, like those type of names. So that's what I'm in between right now. Don't tell me that you don't like the names because it'll hurt my feelings, but if you have a preference, you can tell me. She's really sweet. I'm sure she'll make an appearance sometime. She's a great cat and I will be sure to show you before the video is over, but going with my Charlotte Tilbury concealer, the corrector, I don't know. It's the under eye corrector in the shade One Fair and I just take that on my finger and pop that under my eye. I haven't been liking a lot of concealer on my under eye because I find it just, it doesn't look good because the contrast of like a super high coverage or bright under eye next to a colored blush it's just like stark versus color and it just doesn't look that good and it just creases or makes me look dry or looks heavy and i just think it looks a lot more skin like with just a corrector i want to try the fenty under eye corrector but i've heard mixed things some people say it doesn't give them any coverage at all and others, like the reviews on Sephora are pretty good. So I'm gonna watch Julia Adams' recent video. It's not recent when this video is up, but to me, I saw my subscription box that she uploaded a video using it. So I will probably check that out and see if I wanna get it. But yeah, you can still see like my darkness and everything like that, but it just makes me look awake enough. And sometimes I'll go in with like my Rare Beauty concealer, but I just have been rocking the low coverage on my under eyes and I've been really liking. I'm gonna go ahead and set in my under eyes because I'm going to be using all powders on my cheeks today, which is weird, I know, but it's like all a lot of my new stuff is powder. And so I've been doing a powdered cheek lately. I'm using the Bite Beauty under eye. Well, it's not the under eye powder. It's just the Bite Beauty Change Maker powder. And this is my project pan sneak peek if you haven't watched my video, but I use this on my under eyes and then on the rest of my face I'll use my other powder, but this is fine for my under eyes. For powder, I have the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. This is the shade Breezy. This isn't a mattifying powder and I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a setting. It's like a combination of like a setting powder and a finishing powder. So it's not going to completely like set everything down and prevent it from moving, but it will kind of get your skin ready for other powders and it won't make it so sticky. So I have this shade Breezy, I don't know if I said that. And I just like to set around my face and I'll just kind of feel where it needs a little bit more powder. And then for bronzer, 
I have been using the Kosas bronzer, which is what I'm going to use today. I have a whole video on the Victoria Beckham Beauty bronzer, which is my newest bronzer. And then my other newest bronzer is the Patrick Todd Duo, which I used in my full face of like my Sephora haul. So I'm just going to use the Kosas bronzer. This is the... I don't know. There's no like name on the back, but it's in the shade Light Soft Bronze. And it's a really glowy bronzer, but it looks really beautiful. It is pretty powdery, like, in the pan, especially when you first get it. But on the skin, it doesn't look powdery at all. It almost looks creamy because it has that shimmer in the pan. And it doesn't look glittery or anything like that on the face. And I don't know. I decluttered this originally because it looked like it had a mold in it. And then Kosas did replace it because it hasn't hit the expiry, so they just replaced it with a new one and then i've been trying it out recently and i'm just falling back in love with it because i haven't used this in a hot second and i think the glow that it gives is really nice for summer but it still works great for the winter because it's a really light color i have a few new blushes i have three but two formulas the first one is the say beauty dew blush in the color rosy i love this blush it comes in like a doe foot applicator and I will just wipe it off on the edges a little bit and then dot it on my face and blend it out with my fingers. The color is amazing. It blends out so easily and I just love the way I look in this blush. But I think the more popular one that you guys are going to want to see is the Bare Minerals Blonzer. On my Instagram stories, I showed that I was wearing the shade Kiss of Pink the other day, which is a really nice, just like warm pink shade. I will note that it's pretty powdery in the pan, at least when I use a stippling brush, like it kicks up a lot, but on the face, it doesn't look powdery at all. And with this brush, it's not too pigmented, but I have the shade Kiss of Rose that I'm going to try today. I haven't used this one yet, and this one I think is one of the most popular ones, but I'm nervous, so it's gonna be a little bit deep. It looks a little bit more metallic-y in the pan, but I'm going to try it. This is Sata Kate's favorite. This is the shade Kiss of Rose. And then I'm going in with the Eco Tools. It's like, it says just bronze here, but it's like the stipple light powder brush. I don't really know. It's hard to find because it's like all sold out. But I'm going to try this. I'm just going to dip in a little bit. This doesn't pick up a ton of powder on here. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't pick up a ton. So I think that's kind of the way to go with this deep shade because if I was using a fluffy brush, it would pick up a ton. That is a really pretty shade. I don't know if it's completely unique to my collection, but I like how it's just a shimmer and matte in one. I don't have to mix it. It's not super pigmented. Maybe it's just the brush because this brush is new with the bronzer or the blush. So I haven't used this br this brush with other of my pigmented blushes, so I don't know if this is what's making the difference. I think this definitely helps because I heard this blush is very pigmented, but it's probably the combination. It is definitely pigmented, but on me, I think it's fine. I'm just dabbing it in. I'm not swirling it in or anything. I take a little bit on my forehead just so the color is around my face. It's just a good blush that'll go with everything. It's like a darker version of my rose toned blushes it's just a darker rose so that's very pretty okay next and one of the like actually new products is the pat mcgrath skin fetish divine glow highlighter in the shade golden nectar this came out with her divine blush collection i want to say it is and it's the highlighter there's only one shade in the collection but kyla actually ordered some pat mcgrath stuff for me to send to her and this is the highlighter that she got and it came broken out of the pan and um, they're sending her a new one and just so this one doesn't break in the way to shipping to Canada and she just gets a not broken product for what she paid for and she very kindly let me keep this. So I wore this once and I wore it out to dinner with my boyfriend and the server said that she loved my highlighter and she asked what it looked like and that she said, I look highlighted but it's more glowy rather than metallic. So take a stranger's word instead of mine. But this is what it looks like. Again, I don't have much of a thought. It was pretty powdery and you only need it a little bit because it is more golden. It's hard to see, but it's like a more golden shade and it's pretty powdery, but I just take a little bit 
and I'm just going to buff it into my cheekbones. It gives less of a metallic glow and more like a wet glow, but it still is pretty intense. So I don't think this is worth the like 40 or 50 something dollars, but it is a nice like formula and the color does work on me. I just don't use a lot because I think it would get too goldy. It gives me a nice glow. You can see it in the camera. I could build it up and I will do a little bit, but this is where I would leave it for like every day. So you can see it's pretty glowy. So I just go in with a little bit, obviously whatever your preference is and your skin tone, but this is definitely a shade that I think would work for a deeper skin tone and it's not necessarily meant for my skin tone, but it can definitely work with just a sheer layer. It almost looks like a powder on the skin or not a powder, a cream. And I think this formula is meant to be like a creamy formula. I don't know. I haven't tried any for other highlighters, but people say that this is their favorite Pat McGrath highlighter formula. Yeah, that's what that looks like. I think it's pretty and I definitely will use it a lot. I don't know if it's my favorite. I also don't love the packaging. You have to like press this button and then lift it up. But so far I do really enjoy it. I'm not sure if I would have bought it. Well, I know I wouldn't have bought it with my own money because it, it's expensive, but I'm not gonna get rid of it or anything like that because it is very pretty. And I think in the summer, this is gonna be a gorgeous like wet looking highlighter without looking metallic. I literally just look glowy, so. And I know the part that you guys are all waiting for is the quad. By the way, the highlighter comes in like this purple box packaging, which I love. I love the color purple and it just, I don't know how to do it, but it comes in like a little flap and you just pull this up. And the quad comes in the same packaging. This is the, what's it called? The eyeshadow quad in Venus and Floors Voyeuristic Vixen. I think it's called Voyeuristic Vixen. And I got this because I just kept seeing swatches and pictures of it on Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, that is a lot prettier than I thought. When I originally saw it in the video, I still really wanted it, but I was like, I can't tell what the true color is. And then everyone started getting theirs and I was like, okay, that's beautiful. And then Tara posted her review video and that day I ordered it for pickup because I have a lot of Sephora credit. I still have a decent amount left. So this was technically free. I didn't have to pay out of pocket and I could get 10% off if I picked it up. So I got it and you can't even tell like in the camera how freaking beautiful this quad is, especially these shimmers. This one right here, looks and feels wet. I have not worn this on the eyes yet, but this one just feels like a cream in the pan. And this one's a little bit more flaky, but that duochrome, do you see that? It's it's just so pretty. I'm a little bit nervous for this matte, but I'm gonna try putting it in the crease in a way that's not gonna be a super dark look. I'm gonna maybe try mixing it with my setting powder, I think, because Tara was able to blend it out completely. I'm just a little bit nervous, but I'm just using my Fenty Beauty eye primer. Nobody talks about eye primers anymore, but literally this is one of the best makeup products in my collection. And I am gonna set it with setting powder just so that way I can easily blend out that dark matte without anything sticking. I don't want any restrictions in making this as seamless of a blend as possible because I am a little bit nervous. Okay, I can't find an other brush. I'm just gonna use my under eye setting brush and just set that with powder just to make things a little bit smoother. The Fenty eye primer isn't sticky, but it can make the shadow like stick to where you place it. It blends out fine, but that's kind of the magic of the primer is that it'll make it stay all day. So it's not like a smooth eyelid, I guess. So I just, do that until I feel like it's nice and smooth. Oh, and I'm nervous. And obviously I can just go in with another palette for a crease shade and use this on the outer corner or whatever, but I just wanna, if you are interested, give you guys a review of this palette by trying to use only this palette. So I think I'm gonna go in with my typical crease brush, which is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH34. And I'm going to first dip into the powder and then dip in a little bit, like literally just once to the crease shade and then dip into the powder again. That's what it looks like on the brush. So I just want a sheer amount. Okay, yep, that's, that's what I like. That's a lot less dark than I originally thought. Not that it looks bad dark, but I am pale 
and I like just lighter eyeshadow. So that is a beautiful, I'm so glad that can be blended out. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. I'm sure I could spend time and get it to look like this without using setting powder, but this is a lot faster. Like that is just a, a crease shade on me. And I know that that's a lot darker because I've seen other people use it and I've swatched it. And it is a lot darker when you just use it alone. So I'm glad that I can make this work and it's super versatile because it's not, it's not hard to work with now. I don't have to work to blend it out or anything like that. And it's not even that much work to dip into my powder. I'm literally just dipping in and that's it. So I really like that. And that was super easy. That was my crease shade. I really like that and highly recommend. If you are looking for a softer crease shade to just blend it with your powder, you could also go in with that first, blend it out, and then blend it out with your setting powder. I just find that this is easier. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the lower lash line. I'm gonna just put that under there. Really pretty rose color. I feel like this is kind of like that Charlotte Tilbury Fire and Rose quad that came out recently, but it's no longer available, but it's like a more the glittery glam version. I never thought I would be really interested in these like dark maroon rose matte colors, but it does look very pretty when it's sheared out because it's the same color. This is just a translucent powder. So I'm going to do the same, but maybe a little bit more pigment and go on my outer corner but it's still mixed with my setting powder just so it's not so glam. And yeah, that's a little bit more pigmented, but still really easy to blend out. When I swatched this, it felt like butter. It was so creamy. And I have her other palettes, but that matte is incredibly creamy. I have not felt an eyeshadow like this quad, so I love it. I am a lover of Pat McGrath, but I think I like her quads more because I find sometimes with the big palettes, it's such like an artist palette that it's hard for me to see looks and combine different undertones of colors. And sometimes I just get a little bit lost in finding an everyday look with them versus these quads are really easy to like immediately see what to do. The color story is kind of chosen for you and it doesn't try and do too much. So I really like the quads. I have this one and Floor Fantasia, which is one of my number one favorite eyeshadow palettes. I actually have it right here. It's like a spring dream eyeshadow palette. So I definitely think I prefer quads and I, ow, I just got that in my eye. <laughs> I think I'd be confident in buying her quads in the future. They are super expensive, but I think I just get so much more use out of, I mean, obviously you get more use out of an eyeshadow palette that you're drawn to versus an eyeshadow palette that is good in theory, but you just don't really use. So I'd much rather buy a quad that I know I'm going to use, even if it is overpriced compared to her Mothership palettes, but I know I'm gonna use this one a ton. It's definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone with the dark matte, and also it's a lot more glittery than what I've been going for. I've been going for more like satin colors. By the way, I'm just going in with my powder with the blending brush wherever I think it needs to be blended out all that you don't need to do this i just am lazy um it's a little bit more glittery than what i've been going for but obviously i still love a little bit of glitter and glam so that is the color don't judge me i am not a great eyeshadow and i will fix it as i keep going but i'm gonna go in i'm gonna go in with the shimmer shade and i think i'm gonna go in with this bottom right shade because every single video that i've been watching has been using this top duochrome shade which is gorgeous and i'm excited to use it but there are just a ton of videos that use this and i don't know if it'll be helpful it still is really pretty and i'm going to use it if you want to see me use this quad in a video i will use this one but if you want to see my skin tone go to tara's video when she uses the top shade but i'm gonna use the bottom and it just it's so soft in the pan and it's so glam and glittery so i'm just gonna take that and pat it on my eye. Yeah, that's insanely gorgeous. Um, I am getting fallout, but wow. It's not like a super pigmented 
base, but I find because it is so tightly packed that it, the glitter kind of looks like it has a pigmented base. And oh my gosh, that is beautiful. That is a beautiful eyeshadow color, oh my gosh. Definitely not something that's like subtle. It's definitely glittery, but I feel like this is just gonna be so reflective in the light and give such a dimensional eye look. And I love the undertone of the shade and the glitters. Like I said, it's not like a it's not like a shimmer shade where it has a ton of base pigment to it, but I think it's it's like glittery enough that it is fine without putting anything underneath and just kind of blending it around, just getting a full glitter eye look. And I need to go wash off my fingers, but definitely a really glittery shade. And like I have Fallout all right here, but it's fine. It's a glitter shade. What do you expect? And I'm not going to use glitter glue. I don't even own glitter glue. So this is my baby. Say hi. She was looking at herself in the mirror, but she's so sweet and so cute. She's just been sleeping on the floor because, you know, cats don't sleep anywhere comfortable or anything that you buy for them, they will not use. She's going to sleep right there. You can't really see her, but so I'm going to try and get some of that fallout off of my face. Okay, I have glitter all over my face and I'm just going to have to deal with it, but very pretty shade. I'm going to lightly blend over this, trying not to get more fallout. That is what the shade looks like. It's beautiful. Definitely a like glam palette, but I'm very happy with that. And then I'm gonna go with the lighter shimmer shade on just a little pencil brush. It's the shade right here. This is more just a standard shimmery formula, but I'm just gonna use that for my inner corner. I think you can get a full look out of this palette, but you can't expect to like get a ton of varying looks because there's one matte two like impactful shimmers and then one like inner corner highlight or just a light lid shimmer but i think it's really pretty i don't know if it's worth it for you but i can't tell you if it's worth the price but it is worth the hype i think if you like this type of look i'm going to do my mascara i'm just gonna move the camera there so you can look at her because i don't think you guys will mind but i'm gonna go in with my lancome mr big i don't know how to say it i don't know and just go in with that. I feel like I have glitter in my eye, which is probably not good. Of course I get some on my face, but that is my own fault. I think I still like the Marc Jacobs mascara better, but this one is an OG. I've been using this for years, like since high school, which I mean, I'm in college, so I'm not that far out from high school, but I've been using it for at least three years, so it's still amazing, but I think the Marc Jacobs one might have trumped this one just because of the wand. The wand makes the Marc Jacobs mascara look so good. Okay, for brows, I'm just using the Kosas Brow Pop. I don't know if today I need brow pencil, but since I'm filming, I will go in with a little bit. And I just kind of fill in the tail, which is where I have the sparsest brow hair. And I don't do a ton. I just kind of sloppily fill in the color there. I'm very far away from my mirror, so I don't know how this is turning out. And then I kind of just go through the middle of my brows to make the color even because this brow pencil is a little bit warm for me. And yeah, I don't do a ton, but just a little bit there. And then I will comb it out a little bit just to blend out the color and then go in with a brow gel. I'm gonna do the air brow first, the tinted one. It's kind of my extra brow routine, kind of on an everyday basis. I'll just go in with the tinted one, but I'm going in with the tinted brow gel a little bit. I really, really like this brow gel. And then I'm gonna go in with the clear air brow from Kosas. Again, not necessarily the tinted one has hold. I just like to add a little bit of a stronger hold with the clear one. I don't know. It's not necessarily at all. And then let's go in with a lip product. I'm going to go 
with my classic Glossier Ultra Lip in Villa. It's not classic, I just got this, but I've been wearing this one every day I do my makeup. I have a whole swatch video using these. I don't know if this is the best shade for me with this eye look, but I really like that shade. And that is the look. So it'll take my hair down. It's gonna look a little bit weird since it's been on a headband, but that is everything new, mainly the Pat McGrath stuff, but also showing you guys a few other things. I can do this look pretty quickly nowadays because I've just figured out how I like to do my makeup. I usually like to do more creams than what is here just for my skin texture and just looking good throughout the day. I find that creams look less makeup-y, but I have been really liking the Kosas bronzer and then I got new powder stuff, so it's what I've been wearing. I hope this was helpful to you guys if you're looking at any of these products and if not, we just got to sit down and chat. You got to meet my new kitty. And yeah, so that is all for this video. Let me know if you want to see any of these other products, like if you have questions about them or anything, just leave the question down below and I'd be happy to help if I can, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!